right. Um, let me just fix this. There we go. All right. Um, so welcome. Um, my name is Alyssa Yesko. I'm the director of the Pathways into Education Center. Um, so our office advises on all of the programs within the School of Education. We answer a lot of questions about programs, about admissions, um, about our application process. So we're really great office to start with when you have questions. Um, and today we are talking about completing your application, working on your application, um, learning about our programs, but I'll also talk a little bit about non-degree, which is um, a really great option within the School of Ed. Um, so first we'll talk a little bit about the programs that we offer um, in the School of Education. So a lot of abbreviations, um, you'll see SOE, School of Education. Um, you can study programs that lead to certification or licensure. Um, so we have programs leading to certification as a teacher, a school psychologist, um, school leaders, so school buildings, school districts, school district business leaders, uh, and licensure as a mental health counselor. Um, we also have programs leading to licensure as a psychologist, um, which I, I believe I'll have to add to this slide. Um, we have programs in other areas of education. So we have uh, programs in ed policy and leadership, higher ed, educational psychology, curriculum and instruction, and international education. Um, and then we also have some certificate programs that are um, lower credit load. So I'll talk a little bit about those um, 12 to 15 credit programs that are in specialized area that are typically used for professional development or career advancement. Um, so this is our list of the programs that we offer in the School of Ed. We have a lot, right? Um, so we have programs that lead to teacher or leader certification or licensure. Um, so we have uh, programs that lead to initial teacher certification. So those two programs listed there are for those without a background or certification um, in education or certification as a teacher. Um, and then we have programs that lead to professional teacher certification for those who already hold initial certification. And you'll see the ones in um, gold or yellow, uh, those are programs that we offer online. We have programs that lead to um, certification in school leadership or in school psychology. Um, and we have our master's in mental health counseling, which leads to licensure as a mental health counseling. And I also wanna point out that our PhD in counseling psychology and our PsyD in school psychology um, make you eligible for licensure as a psychologist. So I will have to add that to this slide. Um, we have programs in other areas of education outside of certification and licensure. Right, so we have um, programs in curriculum development, ed leaderships, uh, psych educational psychology, higher ed, international ed, um, literacy, um, and then we have PhD programs in a lot of the same areas as our master's programs. And then I mentioned those low credit bearing certificate programs. So um, those are the, the last uh, column, the CGS in community college leadership, computing education, international ed, Learning and online learning and teaching and teaching teacher leadership. Those are all programs that are typically 12 to 15 credits um, in a specialized area. Like I said, most often um, used for professional development or career advancement, or if you just have a topic that you want to explore. Um, so when we talk about um, studying here in the School of Ed, I always like to talk about uh, the options to study online. Um, so many of our programs are offered fully or partially online. Um, you can find out which ones are offered and how they're offered uh, on our website. The School of Ed is ranked number four in online programs in the country um, for, school, for a school of education and number one in New York and New England for schools of education. Um, and so there's a couple types of online study at, at UAlbany. There's fully online. Um, programs that are designated fully online can only be completed online. And we have a few programs like that. Our curriculum development and instructional technology program, um, uh, our, uh, our international education management and leadership program that is also uh, exclusively online. Um, we just had a question. Um, so the PsyD in school psych and the PhD in counseling psychology both can lead to licensure as a psychologist. Um, so, and I'll, uh, let me see the question about the, um, Jeremy, I will get to that question at the end. Um, that's a great question. Okay. So, uh, for types of online study, like I said, we have 
fully online, fully online option where the program can be completed fully online, but there are options for in-person courses. And then we have partially online courses where some, but not all of the program is completed online. Um, so that would be an instance where uh, certain courses are only offered online. Um, and so there's a there's a sort of like combined component of, um, of in-person and online courses. Um, but regardless of the program, that you are in, there's a high likelihood that you will have the opportunity to take at least some online courses. And our online courses are offered in a lot of different ways. So we have both synchronous and asynchronous formats and some mixed courses where there might be a few synchronous sessions throughout the semester and then the remainder is asynchronous. Um, we even have some hybrid courses with some in-person component and some online components. Uh, but many of the synchronous meetings are after typical work hours. So a lot of the courses that we offer online in a synchronous format might be at either the 4.30 or 7.30 session. Um, and most often those meet via Zoom. Um, when we're talking about um, how students typically study in our programs, um, we get a lot of questions about part-time and full-time study. So some of our programs are designed to be completed as a full-time student. Um, a couple that come to mind are the Master's in Mental Health Counseling, um, the School Psychology Programs, uh, the PhD in Counseling Psychology, the Master's in Secondary Ed, the Master's in Special Education and Literacy too. But if you had questions about the program that you're interested in, you can always um, reach out and ask. Uh, at the graduate level, nine credits is considered full-time. You can explore a program's graduate bulletin for information on what their schedule might look like. So I always encourage students, it's really great to take a look at the schedule of classes versus the graduate bulletin. So um, just as, as an example, um, I'm going to show you guys how to find the graduate bulletin for a given program, right? So let's take a look at the master's in secondary education just as an example. On the program page, you can click through uh, and a link for um, the graduate bulletin on every program page. So you'll see right here, see the graduate bulletin for details. The graduate bulletin just goes into more depth on the requirements needed to complete a particular program. So basically it outlines the program of study. Some of our programs you'll see in the graduate bulletin that there aren't specific courses listed. In some instances, that's because there's more flexibility to the courses that you can select. Um, this program has course uh, courses that are required. And so you'll see um, the different courses that are offered and you can look at the schedule of classes. Um, let's just see what these courses look like this semester. So you would choose fall semester. You'll notice that many of the courses are either ETAP or EPSY for this program, but let's see, um, let's take a look at the ETAP offerings. And you can just, this is just to get an example of, of when the courses are offered that might be required for your program. So um, ETAP 512 is one of the requirements. You'll see it right here. And you can see that ETAP 512 is right here, taught um, in person in the lecture center from 4.30 to 7.20 on Thursdays. Um, you can see, I believe there's another fall course offering, ETAP 638 um, is another course that's required. Scroll on down. This is offered online asynchronous. Um, and so this is just a, a really good way to, to sort of get a feel for the courses that are offered in a given program and when they might be offered in a certain semester. Um, if you're completing a program part-time, there is a statute of limitations around that um, starting from the semester that you enroll, and that's a policy that's university-wide, so six years for a master's program or a certificate program, eight years for a doctoral program. For most of our programs open to part-time study, courses are offered in the evenings to accommodate a typical work schedule. Um, whereas some of the programs that require full-time study, their courses may be offered at different times during the day. So now we'll talk a little bit about the components of your application. So, um, all applications and great information about using the online application portal is available through the graduate school. So the graduate school houses graduate admissions, but also all graduate student policies. Their website is super helpful. 
Um, so this is their, their home page. And if you go right over onto the left hand side and click on um, admissions and click to on apply to a degree or certificate program, this has great information where you can find the program's requirements and deadlines for your program, but also information for on how to um, like the different steps for applying and how to use the application portal and instructions for all of the application materials that you might need. So this can be really helpful, like to find out where you need to send your transcripts. Um, so this page basically has all of the information that you would need about submitting the online application. Um, you can, this is, that's also where you would start your application. So the online application portal is accessed through that website. Um, and again, you can find the application requirements either there or on the program's main page. For transcripts, all of our programs require transcripts. Uh, if you've previously attended UAlbany or if you're a current student, you don't need to request a transcript from the registrar's office. That would be automatically uploaded um, to your online application. For other schools outside of UAlbany, you can upload an unofficial transcript and your application would be reviewed, um, but we do need official transcripts um, once you're admitted. And then, like I said, there's great information on, on how to get those um, applied to your application on the graduate school's website. Uh, most of our programs also require letters of recommendation um, where uh, those are also submitted directly through the online application portal. So you will provide contact information, email addresses for your recommenders, um, and then an email gets sent to them and there's a link that they can click where they can submit the, <coughs> submit the letter on your behalf and it gets uploaded directly to your application. Uh, we recommend that letters of recommendation be specific to the program that you're applying to whenever possible. Many of our programs ask for letters of recommendation from professors. Um, the reason for this is to speak to your academic capabilities and potential for success at the graduate level. If you've been out of school for a prolonged period of time, professional references are acceptable for some programs, but some programs really want letters from faculty who have taught you in the classroom. Um, one that comes to mind is our PhD in curriculum and instruction. And in that case, um, they actually recommend that you take some non-degree coursework, which I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, so that you can have that type of reference. Um, if you are using a professional reference, can that recommender still speak to the characteristics or skills that would make you a successful graduate student? Um, and just something to consider if you are a recent graduate or a current student, um, it may weaken your application if you don't have um, a, uh, an academic reference. There might be some questions as to why you weren't able to submit that if that's one of the requirements for, um, for your program. Give your recommenders plenty of notice. Um, so, you know, at least a, a couple of weeks um, just to be mindful of their schedule. And I always recommend to give them a hard deadline ahead of the application due date or the date that you want to have your application submitted by. So, for example, if, you're at, if your program's application is due um, December 15th, perhaps you can let your recommender know, I'd like for you to have you know, if it's possible to have the letter submitted by December 1st, that would be great. That way, the recommendation isn't the thing holding up your application. Uh, some of our programs require teacher certification. So, um, for example, the Master's in Childhood requires that you have initial certification in childhood or professional in another area. And so you would have to provide that uh, information as part of your application. So these are the, the programs that require a prior certification. Um, if you had questions about whether your program requires a prior certification, you can always reach out to ask. Uh, a, a lot of our applications also require a statement of goals or some type of written component. Um, and so for us, these, these uh, requirements allow us to determine your fit for the program. So are you a good pro fit for the program that we offer? Um, what what's your background like and your skills that you can offer the program. And this also allows us to evaluate your writing skills. And then for you, this is your chance to talk about yourself, your, your background, the skills that you have, what you hope to get out of the program. Why are you selecting this program? What, what do you wanna do with this degree? It should be purposeful and to the point. Um, I always recommend that students do, do research on the program that they're applying to so that they can make sure that the program is a good fit for them. There's lots of great online resources. Um, even your previous institution's career center um, 
are great resources to help you draft a statement of goals. And the same goes for uh, programs that require a resume. Some of our programs also require an entrance exam. Programs that require the GRE are the Master's in Mental Health Counseling, the PhD in Curriculum and Instruction. It is optional for the PhD in Educational Psychology and required for the CAS in Curriculum and Instruction. Um, for these programs, there is no opportunity for a GRE waiver. Um, the only time where the GRE wouldn't be required for one of these programs would be for students who are applying, current UAlbany students who are applying for the combined program for the Master's in Mental Health Counseling. Um, great question. Should the statement of goals be strictly one to two pages? I would say that that's, that's fairly typical. I don't think many admissions committees want to read much beyond that. Um, so I think that that's a fair, uh, fair question. Um, so, uh, and I, if you email the Pi Center, and I'll have the um, the email address on one of the slides at the end, I can certainly send out the slides afterward. I'm also recording the session, so you can also um, get the recording. And then um, someone had questions about the the program, the certification that the MS in Educational Psychology and Methodology requires. So um, I should have talked a little bit more about that. I'm sorry. Um, we have programs that absolutely require certain certifications in order to enter. Those are our approved teacher preparation programs. So in this top category, um, these programs, you cannot enter them without these certifications um, in yellow. But the related master's programs can be used to pursue professional certification as a teacher. But if you don't have certification, you can still enter these programs um, so technically, um, the if you don't already hold teacher certification, you can enter the master's in educational psychology and methodology. Um, but these four programs at the bottom will not lead to a certification if you don't already hold one. Um, the the pro the certifications needed for the master's in ed psych and methodology. If you are using it to pursue professional certification, um, it's initial in New York State in a generalist area. So. That would be childhood, early childhood, um, special education. Uh, there's a list right on the website of the certifications that you would need if you're planning to use this per for professional certification purposes. Um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm not ignoring uh, some of the questions. I'm just, um, any question that's program specific and not related to like what I'm talking about on the current slide, I, I'll definitely get to those at the end. So I'll, I'll get to those um, in just a little bit. Um, so we talked about statement of goals, entrance exams. Um, let's see for our programs. Uh, like I said, there's no waiver, but there is, uh, also no minimum score and what the admissions committees really like, um, to, to, to use this for, um, is, uh, basically to, look at an applicant holistically. The GRE can be really beneficial if your academic record isn't as strong as you'd like it to be. Um, it can show your academic potential, um, but essentially it's used as one piece of your application with other things also being very important. Um, so your letters of recommendation, your statement of goals, these are also very important pieces of the application. I know people tend to get hung up on the GRE, but just know that our all of our applications committees are uh, reviewing this really holistically. Um, and so the GRE is just one component. Uh, I believe they're still offering the GRE from home. So that's also a possibility that that seems to be helpful for people. Um, there are uh, around entrance exams. We do often get questions about language proficiency exams, but those questions should be directed to the graduate school. Um, so you can the the graduate school's email is just graduate at albany.edu. Um, let's see. Um, application fees. There is a $75 application fee for degree and certificate programs. It's paid through the online application portal. Paying should be the last step. So you're not able to edit your application or upload new materials once you've paid. Um, I do believe, though, that if you're still waiting on like GRE scores, for example, um, or if you're still waiting for letters of recommendation, I believe those will still be uploaded after you you've paid, um, but you can always check with the graduate school. So they're the experts on the online application portal and they can confirm that. 
Uh, application, application fee waivers are available for some students in certain circumstances. However, our office cannot administer those. We don't have um, we don't have any involvement in that process. So anyone who's curious about an application fee waiver should reach out to the graduate school or check their website where they have more information on that. Um, the application deadlines are listed on the program page or on the graduate school's website. For rolling application deadlines, so we have a lot of programs whose deadlines are rolling. Um, you should still consider the admission committee timeline and course availability. So we recommend that you allow at least about six weeks before the beginning of the semester you're applying for. Um, you know, if it's if it's a little bit less than that, that's okay. You can definitely still be considered. Um, but we always like to let students know um, uh, course availability can vary, right? So the earlier you get your application in, the better the chances are that you're going to get into the courses that you want. Um, PhD applicants should give ample time. So I would say an eight week minimum because um, committees give a lot of consideration to the to the people who are applying to a PhD program um, because it's uh, such a heavy academic endeavor. They really want to give a lot of time and consideration to those applicants. Uh, acceptance rates vary by program, so we don't typically report that out. Um, and then we get a lot of questions like, what if I've missed the application deadline? What if the application deadline has passed and that deadline isn't coming up for a little while? Um, and that is one of the reasons why non-degree study can be a really great option. Um, let's see. Length of statement of goals question. So I'm just, sorry, just checking the chat. Um, preferred formatting. Uh, I Most programs, if there's a specific format that they want, they will indicate that on their website. Otherwise, they are just looking for a standard uh, essay statement of goals. Um, so I would say uh, if they had specific requirements for their, um, the, sorry, the structure, the formatting, um, they would indicate that. I would say um, single spaced one to two pages is pretty standard. Um, all right, so non-degree study. Um, sorry, I just want to make sure I'm getting everything in the chat. I'll talk about the ed policy and leadership um, once we get toward the end. Uh, so what is non-degree study? Non-degree study is an option that allows you to complete up to 12 credits of graduate coursework before entering a degree granting program. Um, students select from eligible courses offered within the School of Education and they can take them um, at, at you know whenever they apply. But there's a lot of great reasons to pursue non-degree study. So the first would be to explore graduate school and to verify that the program that you want to apply for is the right fit for you and the program that will um, sort of suit your needs. So getting a feel for the program. Another uh, reason would be to start making progress toward a degree program while working on your application. So okay, I I have a lot of things to do to prepare my application. Maybe I haven't taken the GREs yet. Maybe, uh, maybe the deadline has passed um, and I, I'm waiting for the deadline to come around again. You can start to make some progress by taking non-degree courses. It's important to keep in mind that just because you've taken non-degree courses does not mean that you'll be admitted to a program. So you still have to go through the application process and be admitted. This is also a, a great way to make connections with faculty from a program, um, particularly if there's a, if like, let's say you're a PhD applicant and you want to work with a particular faculty member, it might be a great opportunity to take some coursework with them and perhaps uh, um, receive a letter of recommendation for their program. This is also a great way to provide evidence of academic success as you prepare to apply for a graduate program. So, wow, um, this student has done really well in the courses that we require already. Um, perhaps we should consider them for our program. This is also uh, a great option if you're not considering applying to a program and you just want to take a class because you're interested in it. Um, so maybe you're just trying to learn more about a, a certain area, but you're not necessarily wanting to commit to a degree program. Another great option for non-degree study. Um, so how do you apply as a non-degree student? 
Again, you would apply through the graduate school. Um, and so when we were on the graduate school's website before, when we clicked on admissions and clicked on apply to a degree or certificate program, right below that is apply for a non-degree program. Um, so that's this website and there's lots of information about non-degree options. First, you would select a non-degree program um, within the School of Education, there are a few different non-degree programs. Um, it's important to be sure that you're applying to the right one. So I would definitely reach out um, to our office if you're curious about which, um, which program to apply to. Uh, and then you would submit the required materials. Typically, it's less um, le fewer requirements than a full application for a degree program. So the applications are processed a lot quickly. Um, I guess I haven't updated this this website, but our, our this slide, but our programs for the spring begin in late January, um, typically sometime around January 20th. I don't have the exact date on this slide. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so like I said, these are the different degree program options and each of them has their own application requirements. Uh, and then when it comes to non-degree study, can I take any course in the School of Education as a non-degree student? Um, not necessarily. So there are lots of options for non-degree study, but some courses require that you're enrolled in a degree program in order to take that course. Um, so some courses will require instructor permission. Um, and if you are planning to apply to a degree program later down the line, let your non-degree advisor know. So I plan to apply to this program. So I want to make sure that I'm only taking courses that could count toward that program if I'm accepted in the future. Um, we get a lot of questions in our office about funding graduate studies. So I can talk a little bit about that. Um, but the best place to get this information is from our Office of Financial Aid or from the graduate school. So um, it's not it's not necessarily our area of expertise. We we can answer questions about School of Education and School of Education programs, but financial aid questions should really be answer, answered by financial aid. Um, so I do like to highlight that the School of Education does offer scholarships. Um, so within the School of Education, each year we're able to offer scholarships to all of our students. Um, I like to show the scholarship list from, from our previous year because it just highlights how many sorry, right at the top up here, um, how many scholarships we're actually able to offer. And as a student in the School of Education, you are able to apply for as many of these as you're eligible for based on the eligibility requirements. So basically you would check off all of the different ones that you're, that you're eligible for and submit one application for all of them. Um, you can apply for these scholarships each and every single year that you're a student here. So I just like to highlight this because um, when you're applying for a School of Education scholarship, it's a smaller pool that you're applying against rather than scholarships that are open to the entire university. And we're, we're proud to be able, able to offer these. Um, there are also university-wide scholarships that you can find out about through financial aid. Um, they also answer all the questions about tuitions, fees, aid, and payment plans. So um, this is the financial aid website where they have all of the great information about tuition rates, um, based on the different programs, um, information about uh, online tuition, um, fees, payment plans, and uh, the graduate school's website here is really helpful with information on the different ways to fund graduate studies and information about each of those different options. But again, like um, I would encourage you to visit these websites and then reach out to these offices individually. Um, for our international students, our Office of International Student Scholar Services may also be helpful um, when looking into uh, pursuing one of our programs. So again, um, this is our contact information in the Pi Center. So if you had questions after this um, session, we are Pi Center. So Pi is Pathways into Education, Pi Center at albany.edu. Um, we, like I said, we advise on programs within the School of Education. We have, um, we take Zoom meetings by appointment. We are available in Catskill 101 if you are on campus, but we're also very quick to respond to our emails. And we also hold program specific information sessions just like this one, um, but specific to a given program throughout the year. We try to record them when we're able to and, um, and can share those recordings if you were interested.
Now, like I said, we had a lot of questions submitted that were specific to certain programs. So instead of going through them, um, I'm going to take a look at the program specific questions that have been entered in the chat and then answer any more that you guys have. So um, let me just take a look. So we had a question about um, someone who changed their major to human development um, with a concentration in higher ed, um, letter of recommendation from professors previously taken political science classes, and I'm currently taking human development. Um, write a letter, basically. Yes, absolutely. Um, letters of recommendation can come from any professor that has taught you in a classroom, regardless of the background or the type of class that was taught. Essentially, what the admissions committee wants to hear is just the, about the type of student that you are so that they can get a feel for whether you would be successful for coursework at the graduate level. So absolutely, um, courses that were taught outside of an education setting uh, or outside of an education class is perfectly fine. Um, does the CAS in school psychology technically include a master's? Because it's NASP accredited, yes. Um, so our both the CAS and the PsyD in school psychology, um, there's a master's built into that that you earn along the way. The master's that you earn is our master's in educational psychology and methodology. In the CAS program, which is a three-year program, you earn that a year and a half into your program. Um, is there any fee? Okay, so I talked about the fee waiver and to reach out to the graduate school. Um, follow up to the question. Oh, we talked, we did that question already. Sorry. Um, a little bit about the educational leadership required for the PhD. Yes. So for that, you're going to select one of the two options, um, that are provided to you. And I believe there's a word limit. Um, and essentially it's just responding, uh, to those prompts, um, in, in the best way. And based on your experiences, I believe one of them is, you know, to highlight an issue in, in education. And so you can select an issue that you're passionate about, an issue that is, uh, aligned with your research interests and, um, the, uh, when, when appropriate, if you're citing something that would be a good time to include a citation and that can be in whichever format you choose to use. Um, but essentially that's just your opportunity to talk about uh, an, uh, an issue in education or I can't remember what the other, uh, what the other prompt is, but to respond to those prompts so that they can get an understanding of your passion and your involvement in the field. Um, graduate assistantships available on Handshake and the graduate, yes, but I also know there are graduate positions that are oftentimes not included on Handshake. Um, so for graduate assistantship positions, the best place would be the two places that you mentioned, right? Um, the vacancies website or on Handshake. Uh, if there are others available, you can speak to the graduate school because they handle those university-wide graduate assistantships. But to my knowledge, that's the best place to find those. Um, but the graduate school may know um, about others that might be offered maybe externally, right? So some external opportunities. Uh, for the school psychology CAS, a writing sample is not required. Um, information on the community college. Okay, so uh, for the community college leadership, so I, I see those questions here. So um, the program and completion timeline will depend on how many classes you take each semester. So I believe that that program is 15 credits. I just want to double check um, so that I can confirm. It's either 12 or 15, so just hold tight. Um, this is, sorry, 12 credits. Okay, um, so essentially the timeline to completion is basically based off of your plan of how many courses to take each semester and when the courses are offered. Um, so some courses are only offered in the fall, some are only offered in the spring. There's also um, limited summer and winter course availability. So, um, it would just be uh, dependent, right? So it's 12 credits, that's essentially uh, four classes. So it just depends on you know when you're able to and choose to take those classes. Can certainly be done in a year if that works out. Um, classes are typically offered, like I said, there's a, it varies when classes are offered. So you can check the current and previous schedules to get a good idea of when certain classes are offered as far as semesters. Uh, but the time and day would either be usually 
um, online asynchronous or synchronous online or in person. And those courses would be offered typically either at 4.30 or 7.30 p.m. Um, like I said, the, it depends on who's teaching it and the semester, but um, you could find courses in, in any of those formats. Um, except, expectations for in and out of class study time. So in class is three hours once a week. So all of our courses at the graduate level are typically offered once a week for three hours. And there will, there will be variability for the expected amount of out of class time, depending on the class, depending on the instructor. Um, I would say with, with all reading and assignments, you can expect to spend a couple of hours per course outside of class time each week on, on the schoolwork. Um, costs. Like I said, the, the best place to get that information would be financial aid. They do list the per credit tuition rate, so that can be helpful. The scholarships, you are eligible for those School of Education scholarships. And then through financial aid, um, you can certainly pursue uh, the scholarships that they have available as well. Textbooks, again, this is tough to answer because it varies um, whether, whether and which textbooks are required for a given class. Um, some, some classes will have readings uploaded to Brightspace. That's our learning, um, that's our learning platform. Some will require textbooks. Um, you can certainly buy those used and, you know, find places where you can find uh, those textbooks to save money. Uh, the target demographic for the community college leadership would be those working in higher education who have a specific interest or who are already working in a community college setting. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity to learn more about um, being a leader in that setting, but also uh, professional development um, and, it, you know, sort of like a resume builder for somebody who's in that career field. Um, next steps or studies after certificate completion definitely depends on the person. Some people decide they want to then pursue a degree in that area. So um, higher education might go on to a master's program. Educational policy and leadership is the PhD program associated with that. Some do, some don't go on to further study. Um, I hope that that answers a lot of the questions for the, the community college uh, leadership program. Um, we had a question about higher education. So um, our higher education may not necessarily be a four plus one because the master's program is completed um, at a, again, like another program that, that's completed at, at your pace. So however many classes you take in a given semester and when certain required courses are offered. Um, and so it, you certainly may be able to complete in five years for the combined program, but it also depends on how many, uh, how many graduate courses you take in your senior year. Um, you would apply as a junior. So I wanted to ask if I submit the application early around mid-February. Is there any way to have the decision? So um, if you are currently a junior, um, that's a great question. And if you email me that question, Jeremy, I can ask the application of uh, the admissions committee how they review applications. So um, some, some admissions committees meet on certain dates and they review applications then. Um, others will review applications as they come in. And so that would be a great question for me to forward along um, about how they review their applications. Um, so the CGS in autism actually is not offered through the School of Education. Um, I know that that's, uh, there's reasons why it doesn't, right? And I, I understand why it would, um, not like it, it would it would fall under us, but it, it actually I believe is offered through the Department of Psychology. Um, would students in the School of Psychology CAS be able to take those courses? So because the School of Psychology programs are approved to lead to certification in New York State, the coursework is preset. Um, so you are required to take the courses that are required for that program because they meet the certification requirements. Uh, you could certainly pursue the CGS in autism after completing the program, um, but it's not built into the program as far as I know. So for the master's in mental health counseling, there's potential for an interview. Um, can you share anything about what those interviews look like? Yeah, so there, there are applications or there are uh, interviews for the master's in mental health counseling if they pursue to, if they choose to pursue your application further. Um, I think that it is a group interview, but 
Ari, that would be a really great question for me to forward along to their admissions committee. Um, and so if you want to shoot us an email, I can get information from the program director about the structure of their interviews because um, at the moment, <laughs> a couple of our programs require interviews and I might be confusing which ones do group and which ones do individual. And I want to make sure I'm giving you the right information so I can get I can get that information. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> um, do we have any other program specific questions or application non degree questions? Um, I'll also mention a lot of the programs that um, that people have asked questions about. We do have recordings from the information sessions, um, so it is possible. Uh, so I know we have recordings for the masters in mental health counseling. Um, for our PhD in educational policy and leadership. We have recordings for school psych. We have recordings for, um, trying to think what else, ed psych, master's in secondary ed. So if you're interested in those, you can always email the Pi Center and I'll, um, I will send the Pi Center email in the chat just to make sure everybody has it um, if you wanted to view those recordings. Um, yeah, so are there are there other questions? Um, if there aren't, um, please feel free to follow up if if questions arise after the session. But also, hopefully this this session was helpful and provided some useful information for you and um, and maybe we'll see some of your applications coming through. That would be wonderful. And yeah, thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today and learning about the School of Ed. Um, oh, wait, we have one more question. Um, is it necessary to contact any faculty members before submitting the application? It's not necessary, um, but it's something that some applicants choose to do if they just want to connect with faculty, but de definitely not necessary for any of the programs. That's a great question. Um, all right. I don't see any other questions in the chat. So uh, thank you all for joining me today. Uh, have a great rest of your afternoon, day, morning, night, whatever time it is. And um, yeah, uh, thanks a lot. <laughs>